What do you do when your go-to building contractors are booked up solid and you need to find and vet a new building contractor for one of your residential design projects? Today, I'm joined by Lyndon Dover, and that is exactly what we're going to help you with in this episode of Architecture Business Club, the weekly podcast for solo and small firm architecture practice owners just like you who want to build a profitable, future-proof architecture business that fits around their life. I'm the host, John Clayton, and if you want to get notified when I release a new episode and get access to free resources and exclusive offers, then go to mrjohnclayton.co.uk forward slash ABC and sign up for my free weekly email newsletter. Now let's discuss how to find and vet building contractors. Lyndon Dover is an entrepreneur and seasoned property development professional with a deep-rooted passion for design, craftsmanship, and innovation. He's the co-founder and COO of Weaver, an online platform for residential design architects and architectural design professionals to handle project budgeting and tendering fast, and to connect contractors to home renovation projects across the UK. Lyndon is committed to elevating the construction and renovation industry. He has cultivated a thriving network of trusted construction professionals and helped to create a superb online platform that is backed by several influential industry leaders. You can find out more about Weaver at weaver.build forward slash architects. Lyndon, welcome to Architecture Business Club. Thanks so much, John, for having me and for that lovely introduction. You're very welcome. Um, you've recently relocated to Mallorca. Uh, how are you enjoying island life? Uh, it's great. Yeah, lots of outdoors um, and getting that sort of work-life balance that I've always strived for. So yeah, really enjoying it. And um, I think, you know, I'm still outside every day in a t-shirt at the moment. Um, so yeah, it's it's good so far. I've only been here for three weeks, so uh, I'm bedding in. Early days. It sounds fantastic, though. Um, I mean, if it makes you feel any better than you already do, it's been <laughs> pouring with rain in Norfolk today, and uh, I got absolutely soaked this morning uh, on the dog walk. So um, I'd much rather be in Bjorka. <laughs> yeah, fair enough. I'm sure I'll be back uh, soon enough to meet sort of uh, more people from the network that I, that I obviously been cultivating. But uh, but yeah, and family. But uh, at the moment, I'm uh, I'm here till till Christmas. So it's uh, it, it's I'm enjoying the. The nice weather. Yeah, for sure. Oh, not jealous at all. <laughs> um, so we're going to talk about how to find and vet building contractors for residential design projects. Um, you had a, a very bad experience in 2016 with Rogue Contractor. Um, could you tell the story of what happened and how that led to the founding of Weaver? Yeah, sure. I mean, to go back a bit, my, my background was in after university, I was doing project management, uh, construction, project management, and um, site management, working my way through sort of small house extensions, lofts, site extensions, et cetera, then went to work for a large main contractor in, in the middle of London, working on sort of quite large um, developments, you know, uh, taking embassies into sort of eight luxury flats, that sort of thing. Um, so millions of pounds worth of, of, of extensions and refurbs. Um, and then with that knowledge, I was able to go off and, and um, help a small family fund uh, try and uh, make sure that their money was uh, working as hard as it could and uh, have a go at becoming a development manager and working uh, in partnership in a property development company. Um, and that was um, small info plots, you know, up to sort of five flats at one time. Um, and we did about six of them over three or four years. So. It was interesting, varied, um, and you know we were under pressure though to make a return, uh, as a, every developer is. And um, there was one in particular, one development where we basically bought it to, for too much, and we were always chasing our tail. We probably should have just sold it with planning and been right. That's a loss, and move on to the next. But we were eager to get ourselves, dig ourselves out of the hole, which is mistake number one, trying to find a way to make a bad deal good. Um, but we went with a contractor and um, they were experienced on paper in terms of their overall uh, experience, but the individual company, and that was one of the areas, was, was not, it was young. Um, so we took um, references for the, the individual, not for the company they were under. Um, so 
from there things went from bad to worse um and um I, I did a lot of the checks that i normally do um but the company just wasn't um mature enough uh and uh they sadly um were uh, someone that that folded on us and i had to end up being the contracts manager and scrabbling it to the finish myself with the trades underneath so it was like going backwards for me being a site manager again uh with added pressure of trying to bring it in on budget which sadly we didn't so that whole experience of uh, of quite a uh, a dark time for me sort of professionally and personally because i didn't um uh vet and be stringent enough in my outlook when i was when i was trying to negotiate with a contractor trying to get them onto a project that was difficult anyway um so yeah i didn't help myself there at all but from that experience from the ashes of that experience i realized there must be a better way to find a contractor not just through um your own sort of black book or, or through recommendations through um uh, other professionals but there must be an online place to go and find contractors where they have a presence um and there wasn't one that really suited everything that i needed and i teamed up with my uh, business partner greg Keen, who was also going through something frustrating where he couldn't find the right caliber contractors for his um, architecture interiors practice he was running. So yeah, fr- from from our two frustrations, um, Weaver was born and, um, you know, fast forward sort of six, seven years later, um, we are here with a platform that's answering a lot of those and giving a lot more rigor to uh, vetting contractors. That... Um that experience sounds like it, it was a bit of a nightmare, but how yeah. fantastic that something good has, has come out of it. Silver lining. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. So um, you've developed a formula at Weaver for finding the best contractors to finding good, good contractors. Could you tell me the first step in that vetting process? Yeah, I think not everyone gets in. Um, uh, I think for every sort of 10 contractors that try and come onto the platform, uh, you know, nine are rejected. And um, uh, gently let down and <laughs> rejected. Um, and I think there's a, there's a three step approach, right? So um, we look at vetting them um, uh, with the information they give us at, to begin with. So we ask the contractors to upload past projects, and that means that we know that they have undertaken projects of a certain size, of a certain quality, and we get them to upload um, images and also the address and crucially references that we can then verify. Um, So so with that in mind, they're they're building their profile, but we're also getting to understand what they've done. And um, that's the first step. That sounds like a smart move. Um, What what happens after you've done that that first step? What's the next step in that process that you're using? Yeah, so um, once we've got their details and they've built their profile, we then actually call up every single project that they've um, put up there as part of their profile and we verify with a reference so the the referee gets a, a, an email and a questionnaire to fill in about the contractor and they also get photos saying yeah, is this the project that they worked on together under this limited company so we verify that way and then we call them up and we ask some other questions around yeah, you know, would you work with the contractor again is this the company that you work with we're really digging into sort of you know whether they are a bona fide um, limited company that they would be enjoy working with on another project. Um, so crucially, that, that two-step verification. Um, and um, that sort of bleeds into, at the same time, we're also um, checking their company risks. Um, and we do that by going on to company's house and making sure that the company directors um, and the company actually match and they are bona fide and they also haven't got any insolvencies over the last five years and we're looking at their the sort of anomalies that we've built up as a pattern for contractors who have uh, a poor history of rogue trading and that can be um, anywhere from um, you know, setting up companies in similar names and closing them down again um, <laughs> or, or having multiple insolvencies or having a, a large range of different companies that aren't to do with construction um, so we dig into the reasons um, there as well so yeah, spotting negative signals, I think, within Companies House and making sure that we've questioned and really interrogated those. That's the second step. That's already sounding um, really quite robust compared to the way that many people would, would go about this. Um, sounds like there's there's quite a, a lot that's going into that process. So um, 
liking the sound of it, sounding good, very thorough. Yeah. I think a lot of architects do this al- already. I think it's getting their clients to do it. And um, I think it's the time it takes to do it properly. Mm. Um, when you are trying to get um, a tender pack together and you're trying to do all the many things that architects have to do, all the hats you have to wear um, all the time. So this is just another added thing. You're being pestered by a lot of different people um, as an architect. And what we're trying to do is be another tool in your um, in your armory where you can say, right, Weaver can help reduce the time it takes to find reliable contractors. And I know I need to do these um, vetting checks, but I know that Weaver have done a lot of them already. Um, so you're right. It, it, it's um, Homeowners might just go off a recommendation, but I know that good architects are always doing their own due diligence. So we're just, we're just saving them time. That's what we're trying to do. Yeah, I, I love that, that it's... This is something that, as you say, there are going to be architectural practices out there that are doing the, their own vetting anyway and maybe have mm. a similar process. But Weaver is serving as um, a time-saving tool that they can use to kind of stick to doing what they're best, what they enjoy doing most, and to let somebody else do some of the other things in their business that still need to be done. Um, and you mentioned there also about when home owners might be finding their own contractors i guess that that's something that um th- there's some pitfalls there isn't there it's particularly on smaller residential design projects where an architectural practice may have only been commissioned for a partial service maybe to design a renovation or extension projects and maybe assist with planning and building control and then the homeowner might go off and find their own contractors um yeah, you hear of, uh, of lots of horror stories um, and road traders out there and also uh, homeowners getting themselves into a muddle when they don't have a, an architect um, helping them, you know, holding their hand um, through something that is uh, very emotive and can be, you know, one of the most expensive things uh, uh, that they're undertaking apart from buying the house. Um, so there's a lot of decisions to be made. Uh, and one of the key things is getting the right contractor on the project. You can kill a, kill a project if you don't. You know, you're 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 getting in. You're you're inviting them into your home. You're almost getting into bed with them for you know at least three months. So you need to make sure you're getting the right um, uh, credentials and the right rapport being built. And it's difficult to do that if you're just going off. Oh, a friend down the road, they did a good job, so I'm sure they'll do a good job of mine. Or, or I've got this. You know, I've heard so many times before. This guy's done my bathroom. He'll be fine doing my extension. So. You've really got to put some some thought into who you're getting prices back from because I think a lot of people just want want quotes. Just give me some quotes, and then you're like, "Well, who's actually going to give you the best quote that actually um, will give you a, a clear indication of how much it's going to cost, um, not just what you want to hear um, and what you what maybe you can afford." So I think you know finding a good contractor who's right for the job and that matching process is 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 again a bit of secret sauce about what weaver does is it's not just presenting vetted contractors it's making sure that they are location um making sure that their experience and their availability is right for you as the as the client okay yeah that that makes a lot of sense uh so okay so we've in, in this process so far there's been some due, due diligence done in terms of uh, checking credentials, checking on company's house. You've done some checking uh, with the uh, past clients so that you've you've asked for some information to be uploaded about the projects that the contractors have worked on, collated some contact details, reached out and spoken to some of their previous customers. Um, what else happens as part of, of this process of vetting? Remember, don't forget to subscribe to my free weekly email newsletter. You can do that at mrjohnclayton.co.uk forward slash ABC. And if you're enjoying this episode, then please visit podchaser.com, search for Architecture Business Club and leave a five-star review. Now back to the show. Yeah, so I think that the third um, element is the continual assessment. And it's we want to make sure that we've got contractors that are continually um, going to be up to scratch, up to mustard, uh, to work on these architect-led projects that we're attracting onto our marketplace. Mm. And so how do we go about that? Well, 
we talk to the architects that are using our network and their clients and get feedback on um, how did these contracts perform in terms of the tender, but also in terms of on-site and how are they performing? You know, you can be in touch with us. You know, we're here um, and we're wanting to foster relationships with both good contractors, quality contractors. We're celebrating quality contractors, but also attracting more architect-led projects all the time. So we have a, an interest in making sure that these contractors are continually assessed. And also, I go as far as saying, and I think you know, when you speak to Weaver vetted contractors, they say the same. They're seeing us as a pipeline of business. And so an architect might be able to give them maybe one project a year, but we're trying to give them three or four so they mm-hmm. see us as as a as quite a large part of their um, business plan, and so you know when hopefully um, an architect comes to us and says how are they how they're doing, uh, we can say well you know can, can we make sure that they know they're being continuously assessed and hopefully they might pull up their socks more because it's a Weaver project. That's the idea, is to make sure that we've got really engaged quality contractors um, offering a, a, a service uh, that architects and their clients are looking for. I love that, that there's this continual assessment because, I mean, contractor quality and reliability can change over time. So it's good to hear that the process that you have in place, it's not kind of like a once and done, that you are kind of continually assessing those contractors and they're incentivized as well on the platform with, you know, that opportunity for kind of repeat business through the platform as well. So um, I could see how that could, could work really effectively. Yeah. And what I would say for, for you know, thinking about the contractor's point of view is that we're vetting both ways. You know, we want them to make sure that they are being efficient with their time. You know, they, they work extremely hard and I'm not sure that clients specifically realize how much money and energy and time goes into producing quotes for their projects. I think sometimes they can just feel like these numbers get magicked out of the air, but actually there's a there's a whole process around, you know, doing um, takeoffs properly of, of different materials and and um, making sure that that they've actually come up with a price that is bespoke to your project. And um, what we're trying to do is saying, look, we vetted these projects in terms of how serious the client is. You know, we've got a relationship with the architect. They're looking for a specific uh, type of builder in this area who who can start on site within these months. And so they know that that, that Weaver have, have done that um, uh, uh, vetting of the project. So they're happy to invest their time into uh, engaging with projects that come through. So I think there is that two, two, two-way street in terms of we're not just vetting the contractors and making sure they're good. We're also making sure we're introducing them to a, a serious pipeline of projects. I love that. So by having that kind of two-way process in place, you're essentially improving the chances of making a good match between the the project and the contractor making sure we've got a happy contractor on the project and also a happy client at the end of the job that's the aim of the game yeah absolutely john awesome um okay that's that's been really helpful giving us a really good overview um to sum things up what steps would you recommend um to to any of us to find a better building contractor could you summarize what you've described in that vetting process uh, so that anybody could apply that if they're looking to to find their own building contractor yeah i think make sure you you do your due diligence don't just um go off looks or um or the last project that you've seen them do um really interrogate and bonus point for actually going and seeing a site um that is something that they've completed um, ideally that is the same sort of size and budget and finish that you're looking for uh, and I would always try and go and have a look at something that's finished it's hard because you know people are living in these homes so it's quite hard to sometimes knock on people's doors um, if the, the contractor doesn't know whether they're actually going to get the business but at least try and go to a site that is in progress you can tell a lot by someone's um, tidiness uh, orderliness how they engage their uh, their site, um, whether they've got an, a good health and safety board, or they 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 uh, are have got uh, they treat their materials in good condition and they're they're not sort of sp- spread out everywhere. Um, and um, you know you can tell a lot by a contractor when you meet them on site and how they're conducting themselves. Um, so so that's you know as well as references, try and go and see a project that's that's ongoing. 
Um, and I would also, you know, when you're going through your, your to-do list, I'd make sure that they are appropriate in terms of, you know, have they got the right insurances? Um, have they got the right type of references for your for your project? You know, if, what, what are you doing? Are you doing a, a traditional extension? Are you doing a mixed use development? Are you doing a commercial? You know, make sure you've got the right appropriate contractor for the job um, and, um, and get out there and, and talk to people who have worked with them before. And if you're going prior to that, if you're trying to look for contractors, obviously we're a great source, but I would, um, you know, sweat your own contacts as well. I would um, walk the area if you're new to the area, if, especially if you're a new practice. I'm sure people do this anyway, but, you know, when you're out and about, make an effort to see what hoardings are in the area. Um, obviously, you can um, go online and look at other uh, Google sources, etc., but they're unvetted. Um, I would, um, I would use other consultants, use architects. They're already good, always a good place to find contractors. Um, so yeah, if you're looking to source them, that those are a few other ways. Um, but yeah, I think what we've been through today is a good summary. But on top of that, it's insurances, it's your own um, uh, in person, um, and um, and making sure you take the time to decide between the contractors. It's not just about the price. Look at uh, when you're comparing uh, contractors' uh, quotes that you get back. Think about how you can assess them on communication uh on timeliness budget keeping um how they how they resolve disputes um whether they understand different types of uh contracts because you might want to enter into a uh a simpler or more complex um contract depending on the size and complexity of the project um and their experience with working as a design team depending on which um construction uh contract you're going going with so you're there quite quite a few tips hopefully brilliant that's that's fantastic thanks for that Lyndon. um is there anything else that you wanted to say that we haven't already covered yeah i, I think we touched on it briefly i think um you know contractors can change over time so um um you know that we're we're trying to grow with contractors and trying to offer them opportunities to go from uh you know a small outfit to hopefully something that's a very well-oiled outfit that they can go on to larger projects um so i think if you're you're just a slice in time uh if you're just if you're in, in employing them once as a homeowner um so you make sure that you do your assessing properly looking at company's house looking at um who they are today um but i think i, th I think trying to educate yourself about how how much time and energy they put into to your specific quote and and giving them the time of day i think i see a lot of people contractors can get a lot of um stick for all being bunched into um you know the rogue trader they're all out to get you was actually there's a lot of passionate individuals out there who really enjoy what they do and they're coordinating a lot of different moving parts for you and so i think it's taking the time out of your day to be respectful and respond to their um a just be nice and respond to their uh efforts and and give them reasons maybe why you're enjoying uh their service or or why you haven't gone with them i think that's really key i think a lot of the time they can sort of not hear anything for weeks because people are busy you know homeowners generally are working hard to be able to afford the the extensions they want to do so i think you know um feedback i think is something that i would always try and um get busy architects and busy clients to try and offer as part of the whole quite fraught tender process you know uh, getting quotes back is quite it's quite a sort of uh, crescendo in a way but it's um of, of all the hard work getting the planning permission getting the uh, technical drawings together um so it's worth worth taking your time over this point um otherwise you know you can really uh get uh down the line if you just go with a, the lowest quote um you can get yourself into a, a, a mix-up because you haven't thoroughly thought about who's the best fit for my project so um, that's a really great point um i mean on that point there of taking the lowest quote the amount of times that i've heard back from um previous design clients where i've maybe helped them with a partial service in the past with a home renovation design and um you know later on we talked about how the builder's gone when I've, I've not necessarily been appointed for that uh part of the project 
and he's gone for the lowest quote and then it turns out that by the time the job is actually finished that their actual final spend is is much higher because essentially there's been so many things that have been missed from that original quote um that actually the they're often like, oh, we got free quotes and we went for the lowest one, but the final cost was, you know, more than the highest one. <laughs> yeah, it's unfortunately, just... that that's, that can be a lot of the time I hear from quality contractors, they actually price themselves out of, of mm. winning projects because they're being very thorough and diligent with their uh, quotes saying, you know, you haven't actually uh, on your schedule of works or, or your list of things you want to get done, essentially, um, you you haven't included for... Uh, the drainage connections or uh, the overheads uh, around this area or, you know, scaffolding needs to be up for how many weeks, etc. So they really think about how you can practically undertake the project, not, oh, here's my next cash flow. Uh, you know, here's how I can get from um, Rob Peter to pay Paul. Um, so, yeah, do, you need to watch out for that. And, and I think maybe the last thing is we've been talking a lot about matching. I think dig into the experience and, and we're able to do that a lot because we get a lot of information about the project on the platform. You know, the architect has the option to add special requirements. So, you know, do they have sustainable uh, credentials? You know, are they looking for a certain sort of structural glass uh, or other elements that, that only a certain few um, contractors might know how to undertake? So we can dig into the specifics about what contractors we're looking for. But I think as a homeowner, if you're on your own or if you've only bought part package with an architect or, if, you know, they're only taking it to stage four, then, um, you know, be wary of that. You know, make sure you've done your due diligence on the contractor. Have they um, had a nominated contractor for a, a rubber flooring or a polished concrete or whatever before? And if it's the first time, then, you know, be, be aware of that. And, um, you know, you might get someone cheaper if they haven't done it before, but you might get a lot more mistakes. <laughs> that's a really good point thanks for that linda i think um i think we've covered a heck of a lot there yeah. um that's been really really useful so um thanks so much for sharing um your knowledge and experience uh, really appreciate it not at all um so where can people go online to to find out more about you yeah sure um you can go to linkedin and quite active on linkedin um yeah. posting quite a bit there um and also you can email me at linden at weaver.build um or yeah those are two the, the best places to get hold of me really um or if in, you're in palmer come and say hi i'd love to come to palmer and say hi that, that's um all the excuse i need thanks for that um so there's just one one other question i wanted to ask actually i i love travel and discovering new places and i wondered if you could just tell me one of your favorite places uh, and what you love about it uh, absolutely anywhere this could be near or far just um it's actually quite near um mm. so my wife and i've been holidaying in Mallorca for quite a few years um and other Balearic islands and just near here actually um there's a place called Dea which is uh sort of 30 minutes from Palma and if you go past Dea you, you can either, you can only trek there or take a boat now wife and i've never been on the boat here but we walked in a couple of times to um, a restaurant um called safarodada i'm going to pronounce that really badly but it's this beautiful out out of the way restaurant that you can only trek into or, or, and you go past a quarry that they quarried all the stone for lots of um interesting old buildings in palma i think including the cathedral and it's just really scenic and quite a trek and <laughs> when you get to the restaurant you're quite re relieved but this is beautiful uh bay and they do the most amazing paella and um you overlook the sea and there's just there's only a few other diners there and there's lots of little areas you can go swimming and snorkeling afterwards so that's a pretty magical place um and it's nice that it's only half an hour away oh, that sounds amazing um my family and i we've had a number of holidays over in mallorca and that is somewhere that we haven't been before so i'll have to add that to my bucket list for our next Do. family holiday in mallorca <laughs> yeah absolutely awesome thanks again Lyndon. it's been fantastic to talk to you today not at all yeah uh, likewise look forward to speaking more john Next time, I'll be chatting with Janine Coombs, a service positioning expert, about a different approach to pricing and positioning your services. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Architecture Business Club. If you liked this episode, think other people might enjoy it, 
or just want to show your support, then please visit podchaser.com, search for Architecture Business Club and leave a glowing five-star review. It would mean so much to me and makes it easier for new listeners to discover the show. If you just want to connect with me, you can do that on most social media platforms. Just search for at Mr. John Clayton. The best place to connect with me online, though, is on LinkedIn. You can find a link to my profile in the show notes. Remember, running your architecture business doesn't have to be hard, and you don't need to do it alone. This is Architecture Business Club, 